Namaste students. Once again, I am happy to welcome you all to this virtual class. In the last class, we have seen that tissues. In that chapter, we have covered many aspects, many concepts we have seen. So before going to begin this chapter, we will just recall so that the concepts will be linked and you will understand the remaining part of this chapter in a good way. In the last class, we have seen that what is tissue? As we know that tissue is a collection or group of cells. And we have seen the different types of tissues, plant tissue and animal tissues. And what are the importance of tissues we have seen? In that importance, we have seen that tissues, the formation of tissues bring about a change in the living organisms. In the last episode, we have also seen that the difference between the plant and animal tissue. As the plants are autotrophic and they prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis and for food, plants need not to move from one place to another. Whereas in animals, we know that animals move from one place to another in search of food. So more specialization is there in case of animals whereas less specialization we observe in case of plants. As we have seen that in plants, thus most of the cells are continuously dividing throughout the life. Based on the dividing capacity, plant tissue were classified into two categories. One was meristem and another one what we have seen was permanent tissue. In meristems, we have seen three different categories of meristems that is apical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. And also I located the different types of meristems by taking an example. Further moving on to the next, we have seen that permanent tissue. Once the dividing capacity is lost, then the meristems are meristems take up a permanent shape which we call it as differentiation. With the help of differentiation, permanent tissues are formed. In the first category, we have seen that simple permanent tissue. And again, we further classified simple permanent tissue into three categories. What are they? Can you recall this? Yes, parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. By using different types of pictures, I have already shown you that how the cells are arranged in parenchyma. So when we talk about parenchyma, the main purpose of parenchyma is to store food. Sometimes this parenchyma contain air gets trapped into it, we call such a parenchyma as aerenchyma. Sometimes it contains chloroplast which contains chlorophyll which is responsible for making food by the process of photosynthesis. In that case, such a parenchyma, we called it as chlorenchyma. Moving further, we have seen that colenchyma, which is responsible for giving mechanical support to the young plants and flexibility to the plants. And finally, in simple permanent tissue, we have seen sclerenchyma in which the cells are dead. And the sclerenchyma is mostly responsible for giving mechanical support and a cement-like substance we call lignin. The cell wall was lignified which acts as a waterproof. We have also seen that complex permanent tissue. We called these tissues as complex permanent tissue because all the cells are not of the same type. Different types of cells were present in the tissue and together they achieved a specific kind of activity in the plants. In complex tissue, we have seen two types of tissues. One was xylem and another one phloem. Xylem was responsible for conducting water, whereas the phloem, a complex permanent tissue, was responsible for conducting or transporting food from the leaves to different parts of the plants. We have also seen xylem contain four different cells tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers and each of the functions we have already discussed. You can recall it. And as xylem has four elements, phloem contains five different elements. What are they? Just you recall it. Sieve cells, sieve tubes, companion cells, 
phloem fiber phloem parenchyma and we have discussed the function of all these elements individually in the last episode in today's episode we are going to learn what is animal tissue how animal tissues are composed what are the various types of animal tissues dear children i hope the last episode will help you a lot in understanding animal tissue before going to learn more about animal tissue we should know some of the concepts dear students while teaching i am just moving my hands can you say this how could i move these hands how could i move my body parts similarly while breathing you must have observed that your chest expands when you breathe in oxygen gets into the lungs where do these oxygen molecules go into the human body and we know that blood is circulated throughout the body what is the purpose of blood in our body when we breathe in oxygen the oxygen gets into the lungs where blood absorbs the oxygen and transported to different cells with the help of blood now here you can see various tissues are associated that is the lungs there are some tissues blood is another tissue so while moving when i move my hands the movement is also caused by cells a group of cells called muscular tissue as we have seen in the plants cells are specialized in nature to achieve a specific function similarly in animals also depending upon the functions they perform cells are grouped and specialized in case of plants the specialization is less as compared to plants since various types of functions need to be performed in animals so we can see more specialization and the cells are organized in a greater extent so the tissues what we have the animal tissues are more specialized and more organized than plant tissue so depending upon the functions the group of cells perform the tissue is classified into different categories for example blood cells are responsible for absorbing oxygen and transporting it to different parts of the body so the function is transportation and the muscular tissue the cells of the muscular tissue is responsible for causing movement of body parts so based on the functions the tissues the animal tissues are classified into different categories now we will discuss what are the various categories of tissues now in today's episode we will see the <coughs> epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue so these are the four important tissues which we will be discussing in today's episode dear students now we will see epithelial tissue epithelial tissue is a protective tissue in animals it is present in various organs such as kidney tubules lung alveoli blood vessels and skin epithelial tissue plays a very important role in living organisms as it acts as a protective tissue in animals when we take an example of human being this epithelial tissue is a large tissue it is present in different organs take an example skin the skin what we see is made of epithelial tissue and blood vessels the inner and outer lining of the blood vessels inner lining of the mouth kidney tubules the walls of the kidney tubules blood vessels all these organs are made of covered by epithelial tissue this epithelial tissue separates various body systems from one another so only epithelial tissue plays a vital role in living organisms as you have seen in the previous chapter fundamental unit of life where different substances 
needed for the cell are to be permitted into the cells. So, some of the cells must be permeable. So, the important substances needed for the life activities are to be allowed. Epithelial tissues are having little intercellular spaces as it protects from external environment and the cells are arranged in different layers. When the substances get into the living organisms, the substance must cross at least one layer of epithelium. Depending upon the place of these tissues in the living organisms, animals, they are classified into different categories. They are simple squamous epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium, glandular epithelium, columnar epithelium, ciliated columnar epithelium. Now we will learn what are the functions of these epithelial tissues. Now look at the screen where you will see the simple squamous epithelium. In the picture you can see that the cells are very thin and flattened. Take an example, when you look at the lungs, their oxygen molecules are to be transported into the blood. Similarly, food, digested food in the small intestine are to be absorbed from the villi to the blood. When the blood carries oxygen from the lungs and the food from the small intestine to different cells of the body there, from the blood cells, the food molecules and the oxygen need to be entered into the cells. So, the arrangement of cells should be in such a way that oxygen and the digested food molecules from the lungs and the small intestine respectively can enter into the blood easily. So, the epithelial tissue present in the lung alveoli and the blood vessels are thin layer where it facilitates the absorption of oxygen molecules and can easily transport to the different cells. So, the cells are loosely arranged where the molecules can easily get absorbed and transported to different parts of the body. Such an epithelium is known as a simple squamous epithelium. Now, we will see the another type of epithelium that is called stratified epithelium. Now, look at the picture which shows the arrangement of cells in stratified epithelium. In stratified squamous epithelium, you can see many layers of cells are arranged, but in each layer, you can see squamous epithelium. The simple squamous epithelium are arranged in many layers thereby forming stratified squamous epithelium. This stratified squamous epithelium is mainly present in the inner lining of the mouth and esophagus. Now we will see the third type of epithelium that is called columnar epithelium. In the small intestine, the digested food needs to be pushed from one end to another end. Here, look at the picture. The process such as absorption and secretion requires the substances are to be collected and disposed from one place to another, where the passage of these food molecules or the waste products need to pass from the small intestine tall epithelial cells are present. These tall epithelial cells make a column-like structure which we call it as columnar epithelium. Columnar means a pillar-like structure. As you can see in the picture, the cells are like a column which acts as a pillar. Dear students, in the respiratory tract, mucus are formed. These mucus need to be removed or pushed forward so that the place will become clear. In order to push, the columnar epithelial cells sometimes have cilia. Cilia means hair-like projection. These hair-like projections can move forward and backward. When the cilia moves hands and forth, the mucus 
attached to the membrane will be pushed forward so that the membrane will become clear. So, such an epithelium where the cilia is present, such a columnar epithelium is known as ciliated columnar epithelium. Dear children, we have kidney tubules and salivary gland. Do you know the function of salivary gland and kidney tubules? Kidney is responsible for excreting liquid waste generated in our body. Similarly, the salivary gland produces saliva which helps in digestion of food in the mouth. Look at the picture where you can see the arrangement of cells in cuboidal epithelium. Sometimes epithelial cells get some additional specialization. The epithelial cells are organized further which can produce some substances required for the living organisms. Sometimes some hormones are produced. The epithelial cells itself fold inward and acts as a gland as they can secrete some useful substances for living organisms. Such an epithelium which converts itself into a gland and responsible for producing some chemical substances in the body is known as glandular epithelium. You can see the picture which shows the glandular epithelium. Dear children, now we will move forward where we will learn another type of tissue in animals that is connective tissue. Blood is a connective tissue and we see the components present in the blood. Blood contain three different types of cells. What are they? In the lower classes, you must have studied the components of blood. Blood contains plasma in which three different types of cells are embedded. What are they? Number one, red blood cells also called as RBC. White blood cells, they are also called WBCs and finally platelets. The main function of red blood cell in our body is to absorb oxygen from the lungs and transport to different parts of the body. Similarly, coming back from the cells, it gets carbon dioxide in and it brings up to the lungs where it gets expelled. The main function of white blood cell is to fight against microorganisms that get into the cell. Whenever the microorganisms get into the cell, it fight against it. The immunity in our body is determined by the strength of WBC in our body. If our WBC is strong enough to fight against the pathogens, then we will not get infected from any of the pathogens. If our immune system is weak, that is if our WBC is weak, then we will acquire any disease very easily. So, in order to make ourselves strength, in order to increase our immunity, right supplement of food has to be taken. Now we move on to the third type of blood cell that is platelets. Accidentally, if we have any cut injury, blood flows. Is the blood flows continuously or it stops after flowing some time? After flowing some time, it stops. Why it stops? During a cut injury, after flowing some time, the blood stops or the blood clots. The clotting of blood is due to platelets. These are the three different types of cells present in the blood. And one more thing is their plasma that is the fluid part or the liquid part of the blood where these cells are embedded. The plasma is rich in protein. Now we will see the next type of connective tissue is bone. The support of the animal is achieved by a tissue called bone. So bone is made up of calcium. It anchors the muscles. Whatever the muscles we have, you can touch and see. All these muscles are attached, anchored by this bone. 
it is non flexible and hard in nature where it it does not show any flexibility now we move on to the next type of connective tissue that is ligament as i can move my hand can you see now i you can find a joint here here one bone and here another bone how these bones are connected the two bones are connected by another connective tissue we call that connective tissue as ligament you can see ligament in various places joints all the joints whatever the joints of the bones you see in your body all the joints are connected by a tissue called ligament the ligament is little soft in nature and it shows somewhat flexibility the bone is made up of calcium and phosphorus elements now we will see another type of connective tissue that is tendon as we know that two bones are connected by a tissue called ligament and the muscles are attached to the bone the tissue which connects the muscles to the bone is called tendon so the main function of a tendon tissue is to anchor it acts as a anchor between bone and muscles aerolar connective tissue is present between the skin and the muscles as we know that the muscles are attached to bone with the help of tendon likewise the skins are attached to the muscles with the help of aerolar connective tissue aerolar connective tissue is found between the skin and the muscles around the blood vessels and nerves and this tissue is also present in bone that is in bone marrow it fills the space inside the organs and supports the internal organs and help in repair of tissues now we will see the another type of tissue called adipose tissue the main function of adipose tissue is to store fat where does this fat get stored beneath the skin so the adipose tissue is present beneath the skin so all the fat molecules are stored underneath the skin the tissue which stores fat is known as adipose tissue and also this adipose tissue acts as a insulator dear children so far we have seen different types of epithelium blood and the different types of connective tissue now we will see muscular tissue as we know that movement of our body is with the help of muscular fibers muscle cells we call these tissues as muscular tissues depending upon the action they perform muscular tissue is further classified into three categories they are voluntary muscles involuntary muscles and cardiac muscles now we will see what is a voluntary muscle look at the picture which shows the arrangement of cells in muscular tissue the cells of muscular tissues are elongated and these elongated cells are called muscular fibers or muscle fibers and these muscular fibers are responsible for causing movement in our body sometimes our movement is as per our conscious will for example raising my hand and the movement of my hands and the other body parts i can move according to my conscious will the movement such as movement of our body parts walking raising our hands all such movements are called voluntary movements as it is controlled by ourselves according to our will the muscles which cause such kind of voluntary movements is known as voluntary muscles you can see the picture as these muscles are get attached to the bones so therefore they are also called as skeletal muscles when you see the structure you can find alternate dark bands these bands are also called as striations so such muscles are also called as striated muscles the cells of this tissue are long 
cylindrical, unbranched and multinucleate as you can see in the picture. The movement of our food in the alimentary canal which consists of stomach, small intestine, large intestine, all the movements cannot be controlled as per our conscious will. We cannot control the movement in the alimentary canal. So such movements are called involuntary movements. Such involuntary movements are controlled by a type of muscles called involuntary muscles. So the involuntary actions are performed by involuntary muscles. The involuntary muscles are also found in the iris of the eye, in uterus and in the bronchi of the lungs. The cells are long as you can see in the picture with pointed ends. We call this pointed end as a spindle shape and they are uninucleate which means they have single nucleus. They are also called unstrated because they do not have any striations or the dark bands as you have seen in case of skeletal muscles. Now we will learn another type of tissue which is very important in living organisms. As we know that our heart beats continuously throughout the life. So the muscles present in such an organ should be so powerful. So the muscles present in the heart is very hard. The muscle is known as cardiac muscles. The cardiac muscles of the heart show rhythmic contraction and relaxation throughout the life. These are involuntary muscles as we have seen in the previous case. Unstrated muscles, cardiac muscles are also involuntary muscles. And the cells of these muscles are cylindrical, branched and uninucleate. So far we have discussed about epithelial tissue, connective tissue and muscular tissue. Now we will see about nervous tissue. The informations received from the sense organs are transmitted up to the brain and back to different parts of the body with the help of nervous tissue. The nerve cells are called neurons and the neurons are responsible for responding to the stimuli. A neuron consists of a cell body with a nucleus and a cytoplasm from which long thin hair like parts arise. Usually each neuron has a single long part called axon and many short branched parts called dendrites. An individual nerve cell may be made up of meter long. Many nerve cells bound together by connective tissue make up a nerve. The signals from the sense organs are received in the form of electrical impulse. These electrical impulses are carried by the dendrites present in the neuron which then further passed on to the cell body. From where a chemical substance is secreted which then crosses the axon and finally the electrical impulse reaches nerve ending. From the nerve ending a chemical substance is secreted which is then passed to the dendrites of another neuron where it gets attached. This way the informations in the form of electrical impulses are transmitted from one place to another with the help of this neuron. So dear students, in today's class we have seen different types of animal tissue in that we have seen epithelial tissue which is the protective tissue for all the living organisms. Next we have seen connective tissue in that we have seen blood, bone, ligament, cartilage, adipose tissue, tendon. So like that all the connective tissues we have discussed. We have also seen that muscular tissue they are classified into three categories. One is voluntary muscles, involuntary muscles and cardiac muscles. And finally now we have seen nervous tissue. On the basis of the concepts we learned, I would like to give some home assignments which you can practice at home. So here is your home assignment.
students that's all for today's class i believe that whatever the tissues we have seen you